You can find an overview of all my videos at www.genesispc.com and you click on the button videos on YouTube and you get a complete listing of all the videos I created for you on Excel on Excel VBA on Access Access VBA and VB Script when you find a specific mean in a sample that does not mean that other samples taken from the same population will have the same mean. Remember the slogan, results may vary? In other words, the mean found in a sample stands for a much wider range of means. A scientist must estimate the margins around the mean. These margins are often called the margins of error or confidence intervals. How do you calculate those? This is the normal distribution. On the horizontal axis, we have units of standard error to the right or to the left of the value or the mean you have found. By using standard error units, we don't care about the real units are, whether we are talking about nanograms, ki kilograms, centimeters, nanometers, it doesn't matter. So what are we going to do? We are going to find out what the margin of error is or the confidence interval if we find in a sample a mean of 5.5 based on 30 cases and the standard deviation is 0.5 we have to calculate the standard error because the standard error are the units to the left or to the right of the mean and the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of cases. Some people say the number of cases minus one. I will not go into that discussion. So let's find out what the margin of error is. We have to find out, first of all, what confidence level we want to assume. So in this case, the yellow section is approximately 95% of the cases. So we have a 95% confidence that when we repeat taking a sample from this population that the mean will be between here and there. So we are going back here and we are going to calculate. That's what we did here. I specified it for the 99% confidence level, 95% which is the most common one, or 90. You could type anything you want here if you want different confidence margins. We have to find out what the t value is at that confidence level. t is based on the student's t-test. Why is the student's t-test pretty good? Because it considers your sample size. How do you calculate that t-value? It is done by the t-inverse function, two-tailed, because we want confidence levels to the above and below or to the left and to the right. So we take a confidence level of 1 minus 99%, that is 1% confidence level, 5%, 10%. The degrees of freedom is the number of cases, minus 1. There you definitely have to do minus 1. And we found this value. When we copy that formula down, we will get these values. Then based on those t values, so the t value is basically this spot here, or maybe that one, or that one, if you take a smaller margin. Then the margin is B7, that is the t-value, times the standard error unit. These were the standard error unit. So it is 2.76 times the standard error, that is the margin, either to the left or to the right. So what is the minimum value? That is the value we found in the sample minus the margin, and the max is plus the margin. It speaks for itself that if I change the number of cases, let's say we had only 15 cases, or if I go back to 30 cases, that would be the range, based on a 95% confidence. So 95% level, at the 90% level, 
at the 99% level. It's clear that that gap widens. Now let's play the opposite case. How many cases would we need in order to get a 95% error margin of 0.1? In other words, that value we want to be not 0.19 but 0.1. So I want to find out how many cases would I need in this sample in order to get that confidence level. There is a very simple tool in Excel. You will find it under a data tab, what if analysis, goal seek. And goal seek says, what value do you want to set? We want to set this one to the value of 0.1 by changing. Yeah, I can't change much in this case, uh, probably the number of cases. So when I click OK, it says you would need almost 100 cases in order to get that small narrow margin. I'm going to cancel it. I could also have done this with a VBA code or a macro, whatever you want to call it. I created a macro with the shortcut Control Shift C. So I'm going to Visual Basic, Alt F11. And there I added a module to this process. Insert a module. I did that already. I put in there a sub calc confidence interval. I declare a series of variables. I ask for an input box. What is the mean value you have found? Then for another input box I ask how many cases do you have? Let's say by default 30. Then we calculate the standard error by asking what is the standard deviation, let's say by default 0.5, divide by the square root of the number of cases. Then we ask what is the confidence level you want, let's say by default 0.95. Then we want to find out what the T inverse value is by using Excel's worksheet function collection dot t inverse t2 open parentheses 1 minus the percentage or 1 minus 0.95 for instance and number of cases minus 1 for that's the decrease of freedom. So the margin is the standard error times the inverse t inverse value. So the minimum is p-value minus the p-margin, p-max is the p-value plus the margin, and then I put that answer in a message box that says the <coughs> percentage, let's say 0.99 times 100, that is 99% confidence that it's greater than the minimum margin, sorry, the minimum value of the confidence level, and less than the maximum one. When I run that thing here, I can assign a shortcut for the Developers tab, Macros, there is Calc CI, and under Options I implement Shift C, and now I can run it, Control Shift C, what is the value, let's say 5.5, 30 cases, 0.5 is the standard deviation in the sample. My confidence level, the most common one, is 95%. So I find a value between 5.31 and 5.68. Of course, I could do this for any confidence level. I can do it for any standard deviation, etc. That is your choice. To know more about all of this, I would recommend that you either look at genesispc.com for my CD-ROM or for my book on Excel 2013. The book has an e-book version for Kindle, etc., and a regular book version. And these are the four parts of that thing. Data analysis, plotting data, including interpolation. Curve fitting, best fit, curve fitting, statistical analysis, estimating margins, that's what we discussed here, and it will also go into ANOVA and chi-squared.